Thank you. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Didier Gallant, and I'm working with uh, Alstrom Monche, uh, working on the color trend. So here we are to talk about the future in color and color for future. So let's start. Uh, as I mentioned, so I work with uh, Alstrom Monche for many years now, so I'm very fond of this uh, industry. I'm very fond about this product, and I try to do my best to uh, defend the, the laminate which is, a, for me, a very interesting product to develop. So my work is, uh, my business, uh, business is based, uh, and my office is based in Paris, but I work uh, internationally, and all my customers are mainly in the home product. So I work for the trend for all kinds of a product, but also development of, uh, of collection and development of, of product. So I work for Mongshu and E2P, which is the printer associated to, to Mongshu for many, many years. And for me, it's an honor to work with this company for a long time. So now let's say, uh, and let's start with the most important thing, which is what's going to happen in the future with, with colors. And we are talking about the forecast for 2019-2020. So, as you know, the, the main topic now, and everybody is talking about Earth and about what happened to our universe. And this year, Alstrom Mungshu is very proud to work on the idea of the universe. So, we are going to do a kind of a step back to the history of our planet. So, this, is, this collection is really a tribute to our Mother Earth, and also it's a name to natural colors because here I feel that the people are really keen of natural effect and natural color, really to please with the environment, but also to feel much more comfortable. At the beginning was the, the fire and the melting element. So this is the idea of the beginning of our earth, beginning of our world and melting all the elements. So it gives birth to a very special uh, a range which we call fusion, which is also starting with the idea of the melting element, all everything in fusion and eruption. So we are talking here about brightness, about warmth, about intensity, all colors which re really remind the idea of eruption, tonicity, and uh, very di dynamic colors. But also we have in that same story an idea also of softness. It's not only the, the idea of brightness and radiance, but also an idea of something soft and comfortable. For the idea of a softness in that world, we are starting with that type of mood with a very natural uh, ivory tone, some soft pink, but going also to some idea of terracotta and soft red. Here we see also starting in the, in the furniture industry using all this type of color. So something which is uh, uh, really appealing with, uh, with the comfort of the idea of quietness. So here you have in the, in the textile area, you have also mentioning the idea of coral. Uh, Pantone has recommended the uh, coral color as the color of the year. So we have also included in that section the, the coral. And you have also, of course, the natural white which are very important. We are talking about the white a bit later, but here is the first step of the idea, uh, de really defending natural element and natural colors. So the sec second part of the family is what we call, of course, coral and terracotta. It's all this type of natural element, like uh, something a little bit powdery, not too bright, but something soft as well. So we start with the, the real terracotta colors and coral, but we go also to the burgundy and the soft, uh, soft red and something a little bit uh, soft, yeah, softer and subdued. And we see that uh, even in the interior, we start to work a lot with that terracotta look, so which has really the idea of something very natural, touchy, again working on the uh, softness of the, of the element and working probably on some special textures which are reminding the idea of terracotta, so a little bit powdery and very soft. Again, 
Uh, the idea also of the uh, touch is very important at the moment with the laminate. It's not anymore just the idea of colors, but really the effect of what, what brings the, the laminate to the world. And the people are really looking now for, of course, the anti-fingerprint anti uh, effect, uh, or the super soft, but also the super shiny. But here in that uh, area, we are mostly with the, with the super matte. But as, as you can mention on the picture, there are also some very shiny and a super bright uh, effect. And the, the last part of the family is what we have as intense and brightness. So it's really uh, bright yellow, uh, radiant oranges, and some uh, bright pink, and of course the, uh, the red, which is very important and which is quite the symbol of, the, of this family. So here also you have also some example in the uh, different type of industry. It can be in the painting, the textile, even in glass. We see a lot of glass in the stack of bright colors and also uh, playing with transparency, which give a, a more intense uh, effect. And of course, all the uh, type of laminate and uh, paintings. And it gives birth to this type of uh, range, which is really uh, a rich and intense a uh, family of colors, starting with the transparent and natural white, which is a kind of an ivory. We go to the powdery uh, pink, so especially the very soft pink, going to something a little bit more subdued and a little bit more grayish. After that, we step with the, with the terracotta, a bright pink, or the family of red, oranges, the bright yellow, and at the end, you have the coral and the shiny red. And I, I want to show you the exact color, because sometimes the colors are a bit different on the, uh, on the computer and on the, on the screen. So you, here you really see the correct colors. At the end, uh, everything became solid. So here we have created a, a new ambiance, a new mood with a mineral landscape. So it's a, a different type of family with the, all the natural effects uh, based probably on, again, natural tones, starting with the grays and the beiges, of course. And we have, of, of course, the idea of to, to work on this type of effect and this type of uh, uh, colors. We start with the, the gray family. We have also the beige and we have the white. So we start also uh, 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 speaking about natural elements. We have the starting point with the, with the fusion, which was the melting of all the elements. And after that, the thing becomes solids, and it gives birth to that type of neutral colors. So it's also important to feel that the people are also looking for something natural again, but also comfortable and more neutral and quiet. So we start with the, with the gray, grayish mood. At the moment, gray is everywhere, and I feel that for the, for the future, it will stay there, and especially with the, with the very light uh, color tone, which is probably going to replace for a while the, the white. So it's a kind of a silver, so something very light, and we go through some, something medium in terms of tone, and going till the uh, anthracite and the half black. So of course you see uh, everywhere in, the, in your environment at the moment and in the, in the commercial point of view, the gray is really a very tough color at the moment. So we start uh, speaking also about the, the mood of gray and you can see that everything is gray. It's not only a detail or it's not a ma just a main piece, but it's really the, the total look with the, with the flooring, the furniture, and it could be also the painting. Here you have the idea also to play tone on tone with a dark color, with, a, with, with the anthracite. And even in the wood area, with the wood grain, you play also with gray. The second part of that trench is uh, what we have beige and camel. So this is also an evolution with the, with the beige, because before we have really the, the capu cappuccino look and the, the uh, kind of a strong beige. Now we are going to start with a very light camel again, and we go to something a little bit more yellow. So there is a new step 
with, uh, with the beige and a new life for the, for the beige. For a while, the beige have disappeared completely, but I feel quite strongly that the beige are coming back very strong. So here you see also, and, uh, yeah, and it's also probably the influence also of the leather industry. And we saw a lot in Milano for the, all this type of natural uh, coloration for, for leather and different skins. Also with the stone and also of course with the laminate, we have a lot of beige already, but I feel that it's going to increase quite a lot. And of course the white, you know that for our industry, for the laminate industry, white is very important. But we feel also that there is an evolution with the white. Uh, we were talking a lot in the past year about polar white and all this uh, cold white. And I feel very strongly that the white are going to be again in the natural section and natural orientation. So, and as you can mention on the, on the picture, it touched uh, as well the, the, the stone. So you have also a lot of proposal now in natural stone, but also in printed, uh, all this type of white on white, uh, neutral stone. Of course, the textile, paintings and, and laminate. Even the wood, you can also play a lot with white. And it gives birth to that uh, type of range, which is, of course, starting with the half white and going through some uh, pastel beiges, something very soft, and going to the taupe, the gray, uh, the light gray, and the dark gray. This is the final colors. As you can mention also that uh, I play also with a, with a kind of a gold, which, are, which is going to be a kind of a accent in that range. But mainly this is natural and soft contrasted uh, range. But we start again with the natural white and we go to half bl black. And the last um, uh, event of, in uh, our world is uh, when the, the, the water appears. So it's, we, call, we say, with a drop of water, life appears. So here, it's really the idea of uh, uh, something wet. So we play a lot with, uh, of course, all the family of blues, family of green, with just an accent of a kind of a yellow, which bring also the idea of life. So here in that family, we play with the idea of freshness, of course, the idea of regeneration. So this is also a positive message to the, to the Earth. Here it's a kind of a recap of the history of our universe. And I want to end with a positive look and with a positive feeling. So I feel that the idea of freshness, the idea of regeneration, and the idea of humidity and water, it's something also very important in terms of message. So of course, we have a, a kind of a recap like this with the, with the life. And what is the symbol of life is really the water. So, and of course, the symbol of water is the blue. After that, you have the, the greenery with all the idea of what is growing in our world. So something, again, very positive with the family of green and with the, the idea also at the end of something with the vitamin, which is, of course, necessary for us to survive. So in the mood for, uh, for blue, so of course it's a, it's a range of blue, uh, starting with a very important color, which is a kind of a dusty blue, a light dusty blue. We go through a, a new turk, which is also coming back, and we go also with a, a kind of a peacock color, which is still there, which is a, not a new trend, but I think it's still very important on the market, and also that type of deep blue. Here it gives birth also to that type of, uh, of uh, furniture and you see that it can be also uh, again here with the, the finishing we have the super gloss and especially with this type of, uh, of blue but also with the turk and you have also that uh, also bright blue which could be also more in the matte finishing. 
50 shades of green, of course, we had 50 shades of grey or 100 shades of grey. I think that the green is m much more important, so it's why uh, we present that uh, range of uh, colours. And as you mentioned, it's, they are all natural colours and influence of natural elements, starting with a kind of, a, a, let's say, light olive or light army green, uh, something a little bit lighter and more greyish, like a kind of a sage colour and also a kind of an army again, but darker, and some other shades of greens. So it's a very important color, and it's touched all kinds and all elements uh, in decoration. So it's not only uh, the textile, you see also in the, in the painting, in the, in the laminate, uh, in the glass as well. So it's important to play with all these uh, shades of green coming really with the light, from the light, light shade and going till the, the M world. And at the end we have the idea of something vibrant and tonic and especially that type of yellow green which is of course very important. So you see that uh, uh, that uh, mood and that feeling and that family of color is also important for all kind of piece of uh, element in the uh, furniture um, uh, business. And it gives birth to this uh, type of, uh, of range. So starting with this grayish blue, which is for me a very important color. Uh, very important also because it matches with a lot of things. It's a quite of neutral color. It's not too bright, it's not too special, and probably it's also a very nice fitting with a natural uh, uh, wood grain. So all the, the new Scandinavian wood grain, it's a nice combination with this type of gray. Another color which is very important is the emerald. So the kind of a dark green, so it's also a very special color, but very uh, probably influenced by the decoration. So it's something very rich in terms of color, so quite deep. And at the end, uh, the last color also, which is very important, is that type of acidic green. And also this type of two uh, pastel tone with a kind of a sage and this type of natural green, which is also important. And you have here the natural coloration. That's it for the moment. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any question, I will be very pleased to answer to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.